Even though I made a stop in Austria during my travels, my ultimate goal was to visit both Prague and Budapest at once no matter when I was there as I couldn't imagine visiting one without the other. These two cities just felt like they belonged together and I always had this idea of seeing them in winter because I thought the cold would add something special to their charm. Maybe it's because I've never experienced the real European winter chill before. After getting off at the train station, I bought a 7-day Budapest travel card that gave me access to buses, trams, and subways. What made it even better was the Budapest Go app, which let me purchase tickets and then use the QR code as my ticket, saving the hassle of finding a ticket counter. Budapest is famous for having the first subway in continental Europe. Although there are newer and more modern lines like this, while heading to my Airbnb, I found myself traveling on Metro Line 1, which happened to be the oldest subway line on the continent. One of the factors I considered when choosing an Airbnb for my week-long stay this time was its heating system. And that's why I went with this place. I really liked that I could tweak the temperature in this house exactly how I wanted with the Nest thermostat. I spent some time planning out my schedule for tomorrow and then I ended up falling asleep, still feeling a bit that first day awkwardness. I was a bit frustrated last night when I realized the Airbnb owner had locked the Nest thermostat requiring a password to adjust the temperature. However, after a chat with the owner this morning, it got unlocked. So everything worked out in the end. Budapest is split by the Danube River into Buda and Pest. I chose to stay in Pest the newer part of town, and my first stop was Buda Castle. I hopped on the bus heading to a stop closest to Buda Castle. It wasn't until later that I realized the transportation card I bought yesterday includes the funicular to Buda Castle. However, in the excitement of the first day, I completely forgot about the transportation card and ended up walking instead. Even though the castle wasn't too far, the walk up here was pretty stiff. But after glimpsing at the stunning Budapest scenery along the way, walking like this wasn't a bad idea. I was kind of lost about what to see or where to go first. But then I stumbled upon the changing of the guard ceremony. There were so many railings around the castle and they all offered such great views of the past. This spot is like the gateway to Buddha castle and it looks pretty simple compared to the huge castle. Unlike royal palaces in other European countries, touring the interior of Buddha castle was not allowed it at all. It seems the only part you could actually visit inside the castle was the National Gallery. To 
today's weather is not the best for sightseeing with all these clouds, mixed snow and rain, but the scenery is still pretty amazing. I didn't get a chance to come back here during my time in Budapest, but a day like today is better for a leisurely walk than a super sunny day. Although I can't help but imagine how much more beautiful it will look on a sunny day or in the evening. It's given that the weather won't always be pleasant when traveling on snowy or rainy days like today. I may feel bothered initially by getting wet, but once I'm soaked, I just go with it and wander around without a care. Despite the weather, there was still plenty to see, so I stopped whining about it and just keep on exploring. Once I got into the square of the castle, the Ryan Courtyard, there was a museum and a library. As luck would have it, they were having some anniversary thing, so I got into the library for free. I don't usually visit libraries while traveling or in my daily routine unless I have a specific interest. But with the weather being so bad today, it seemed like a good idea to take shelter and check out the library for free. The rain had cleared up by the time I had explored almost all over Buddha Castle. In the Buddha Castle district, Alongside the Buddha castle, you will find Fisherman's Bastion, known for offering the best view in Budapest. Matthias Cathedral, right across the fisherman's bastion, was the first thing I noticed. I was thinking about whether it was worth traveling just to see tourist stuff, even with all the hassle of adjusting to time difference, dealing with money exchanges, getting a SIM card, finding accommodation, and trying foods I might not like. Lots of other YouTubers portray tourist spots in a polished way with better weather than today. But real travel is about more than that. It's about immersing yourself in the day's weather, the smell of the air, the local ambience, encountering people from diverse backgrounds, and being open to unexpected moments. These are experiences that can only be fully appreciated in person along with the introspective dust that travel often brings. I believe these are the true rewards of traveling.
I was pretty happy to stumble upon a restaurant with the same name as the one back in New York. I thought I would grab lunch there, but it was closed. They suggested another restaurant nearby, so I ended up eating there instead. I had already sampled goulash in Prague, but I couldn't resist trying the original goulash in Budapest, Hungary, where it's originated. I ended up eating more than I planned, perhaps to make up for walking all day in the rain and snow, but I felt content. After just one day in Budapest, I'm already excited about spending the next six days. 